five minute recess and get the YouTube set up again and uh, show the video for the benefit of the members of the public. So, uh, I just, sorry if you didn't hear that, our, the YouTube channel just uh, went down. We're going to uh, take five minutes to fix that and then uh, come back and we'll have to start the video because people on YouTube could not see it. Oh, it's back. Wow. Caitlin is a miracle worker. It was All just right. getting so good. I know. So why don't we just wind it back a little bit? Um, Carol, I should, while we're getting that fixed, thank Melody, Melinda, Carol, and Caitlin. Uh, they're all here in the council Merci, chamber. Thank you. And they're doing a great job. I think uh, you'll agree with me. There are a lot of moving parts with these meetings, particularly a joint meeting. So my sincere thanks to uh, these four uh, very dedicated and professional public servants. So thank you. A virtual clap for them. All right. So we're back. Uh, with our audience of dozens watching. And uh, we'll just start again at Leitrim. So to those people who were watching, I apologize. I apologize. Um, something happened with the uh, YouTube, but it seems to be back. And we're just going to show you the rest of the, uh, the video. There's another minute, I believe, left uh, of the video, two minutes left. Go ahead. Great, thank you. Uh, back to you, Mr. Morgan. Thank you very much. So if we just, we'll pop up the presentation and then we'll go through that to uh, give you a quick rundown of, of what's going on on the alignment right now and the, the progress that's been made uh, since the last update. I think we also have to thank Eric. Is Eric helping us today? Thank yes, he is. For all the videos. So, <clears throat> So you skip ahead, uh, Eric, to I think the next slide is just the, this is the economic impacts that John spoke about already, $550 million uh, in the 2000 jobs. We we'll start in the, in the south with the O-Train. Go to the next slide. Uh, so Bayview Station, so this is where we, we have the existing 40 meter trillion line platform. We're expanding that platform uh, to 80 meters and adding a second platform, so end of the line. So we've got some redundancy of that platform. If you go to the next slide. The rock cut widening here. So this is uh, you know some work that we've done with the contractor to widen the rock cut, essentially from all the way from Bayview uh, down to uh, just shy of Beach Street. Uh, so they're behind the echo barriers on the fences there, trying to get that work done as quickly as possible. We go to the next one. Uh, Carleton University. So just briefly uh, in the foreground here, you see uh, the tarp and the, the orange structure there. That's actually a future Carleton University tunnel. So they were future proofing that location. So at some point in the future, Carleton can come back and connect to their tunnel network. Then you see the existing platforms, which are going to be lengthened uh, to the south. And then in the distance, the, there's a multi-use underpath, multi-use pathway underpath that we're rebuilding at the moment. So if you go to the next slide. Uh, Mooney's Bay Station. So this is uh, one of the stations where, you know, a simple station, but they're making good progress there. You see kind of we've got the foundation walls on, on either side, left and right, and they're going to do the infill to actually build out the platform. And then just in the right hand corner, you see the existing uh, fair gate uh, building that's uh, still in use and we're going to reuse in stage two. So we'll go to the next slide. Uh, Greenboro mm -hmm. Station. So this is kind of a uh, for people who are familiar with the station, you know, it's uh, amazing to see the old platform essentially stripped out and they're putting in the new 80 meter platform and then on the northern or the southern end, the, the middle of the, the frame there, as you see where, because of the extended size, we actually have to add a second emergency exit. Um, so there'll be a staircase there for emergencies that'll take you down to the, uh, the bus loop if needed. So that's Greenboro Station, go to the next slide. I'll show you a uh, Walkley facility. So that's going on very well. You know, we're seeing a lot of progress there. You see the, they're finishing up the windows on the exterior, the roof, there's some final work to be done. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you'll get a shot of the interior. 
uh, sort of interior the floor has been poured in part of the section just out off to the screen on the left is where the trains will pull in so there'll be uh, fully indoor heated trains and the advantage of this facility that we didn't have in the last facility this one will actually have a wheel lathe um, so it's in the, on the original line we had to send the wheels out to a, a third party location to get them turned if this location will actually have a wheel lathe in situ which would be good in case we have wheel flats go to the next slide uh, South Key Station. So uh, the structure is a lot of work here kind of at the, the ground level to build the underpass for the free flowing uh, passageway through to the other side, as well as the fair gate area. So you can actually enter from the mop right into the fair gates. And then from here, you'll go upstairs or up the elevators to the, the to a center platform uh, for trains going north and south at this location. This is also the transfer point for the airport. So we go to the next slide. Just a, a view of Leicester Rail Bridge. This is one of the bridges that's uh, essentially finished uh, with the work that they can do in winter. It's uh, really waiting for the, the spring thaw. They can come back and put the ballast and start laying the track on this bridge. So this is a, a highlight of the project is eliminating that grade uh, crossing for freight at that location, which is very good. Go to the next slide. Uh, airport elevated guideway. Uh, they got all the girders uh, installed at this location, which was very good. And they actually, uh, due to the reduced traffic at the airport, they were able to get uh, easier access to drop them in by crane. They were able to park on the airfield, which was uh, kind of certainly help them out get those in place a little bit quicker than otherwise expected. So good progress on the airport elevated guideway. We go to the next slide. Uh, and then just some shots. We actually have... Uh, as part of a partnership with Transnext, we do have an inspector full time in Switzerland because we're not able to go due to COVID travel restrictions. So this is a look at the first couple of car shells, and so the, the production of the flirts is is going well, and we are getting regular updates on the work that they're doing. We've seen photos with the delivery or the exterior paint job completed. We've also seen them the, starting to fit up on at least one train of all the interior electronics. So good progress on the, the flirt production in Switzerland. Go to the next slide, please. Uh, so just some upcoming work. So we're continue, uh, continuing work in the middle of a hunk club road where we're building the bridge of our hunk club. So that's a, a joint bridge that'll be used for the rail line as well as a pedestrian overpass. So that'll be a good new feature for the area. The rock cut uh, removal, the rock removal and the rock cut widening continues uh, between Beach and Gladstone, starting to get into some staging work for Rideau River Pedestrian Bridge, which we'll talk about in a moment as part of the, the detour, and then some foundation work continuing at Elwood Diamond, Lime Bank Station, Mosquito Creek. Leitrim is uh, pretty much wrapped up uh, in terms of they have the girders in place now, so good progress there. Go to the next slide. Uh, so they need to finish off. Obviously, they're working on the building diligently at Walkley MSF. They need to start on the tracks and I get that done. A few bridges to finish up, and then the station construction at all locations along the alignment. Uh, and then the final track work at that maintenance facility. Go to the next slide, please. So, so just some traffic mobility impacts. On the Trillium line, it's largely uh, related to multi-use pathways. So this is uh, mostly unchanged from last time. The, the, uh, the addition of this slide is really the mop along the Rio River near Vincent Nassi Park, where we're adding the landing point for a new pedestrian bridge, has to actually land. Uh, on where the multi-use pathway runs now. And there's a bunch of work to regrade it and uh, make, uh, make the landing place appropriate for that bridge. So there's some detours that we're looking at, but we have been working closely with the councillors to assess opportunities to improve that detour in that area. You go to the next slide. Uh, again, a few mops affected by work at all the stations. Uh, Brookfield siding is the one affected by Elwood Diamond. Uh, you know, those are, in various states of detour, largely I would say that they're working pretty well. Go to the next slide. Uh, so just to talk a little bit about the schedule. So this is the, the overall program uh, that's in place for the O-Train expansion. Um, so you see 2020, you know, we shut uh, the shutdown, the MTO replacement of the overpass, uh, building the Walkley facility out through into early 2022, completion of the guideway construction. You see a lot of things are kind of lined up for the end of this year, early next year, obviously training, trial running, and then the handover to the city. And then at that point, we decide, uh, you know, with OC Transpo to, to determine a launch date. Uh, so there is some pressure on the schedule at this time. We haven't accepted all those schedules at face value. And so we're working closely with the contractor. We've engaged an independent review team to come in and look at that schedule, reassess and redo a baseline. 
understand what it's going to look like. How can how can we resolve those uh, those schedule pressures? Um, and we're working with TNEX to do that update in the next month or so. So you go to the next slide. So we'll talk about the east. So there's just a few short slides on the east, um, but a lot of activity. If you go to the next slide, a lot of activity in this area, which has been uh, very visible to people using using the road network. The biggest change uh, here you see in the in the distance there, you see the orange structure. So that's a, a bent structure that's going to go over the roadway. So eventually the roadway will be uh, moved back under that structure, but they're going to they essentially detour everything out of the way so that they, they can set all the girders. Um, and this is where the train system is going to leave the, the center of the 174, travel off to the side, and then connect into Blair Station. So this is a, a lot of very good progress there, and it's very visible to the public. So it's good for people to be able to see, see the progress in that area. If you go to the next one. This is the, the big uh, accomplishment that we achieved at the end of last year, was really getting rid of those original road bridges and making space for the, the new Montreal road station. And so you kind of see the, the spot that's there now. Um, so they'll start working in that center median this summer to put in caissons, to build up the station structure and, and start to build the, build what, the, what will be the future Montreal road station. So very good progress there. That was a major accomplishment for 2020. If you go to the next slide. Uh, here, it's not, not as obvious uh, from, the, from the high level or the overhead uh, pictures, but essentially what they're doing is they're widening the, the rock in this area, widening the road, they're making space for drainage so that they can get the, create the space in the center uh, for, for the new LRT station, which is going to kind of drop down right where you see those trucks parked uh, in the middle of the roadway there. So some widening happening in this location. If you go to the next slide. Uh, again, Orleans Boulevard, a bit of the same type of work. It's, uh, you see in the, in the center of the highway, there's not a lot of space to build a station. And so they're really working on just widening the highway now. They're gonna move traffic over to make space in the center and then they'll start working on the station. Go to the next slide. Um, so this is, uh, this is pretty straightforward uh, in terms of the work that's going on in the east. A lot of impact in terms of uh, removing the old roadway and some noise and uh, issues that have come up as a result of that work. Uh, but they are making good progress in, in the entire eastern section. Um, and uh, I guess the one kind of new thing that will happen this year is there's a, a pedestrian bridge going over Greens Creek, and that will be start, the caissons will go on this year, and they'll start to see that come out of the ground, which will be very exciting for local residents. Go to the next slide. Uh, again, with them building that uh, new station over Montreal Road in the center of the 174, there's going to be some off-peak lane closures or some lane, potentially some longer lane closures in the summer, but we had good success with this last summer and it didn't have huge impacts on traffic. So we'll hope for more of the same this summer. Let's go to the next slide. Um, so this gives you, again, a high-level overview of the testing program and the commissioning program, how we're going to put the system into service. Uh, you know, I guess rough, rough timelines are 2021, 2022, we're going to build out the guideway and then 23, put in the system infrastructure, then 2024, uh, that's when the real testing and commissioning happens, it gets handed over to the city, uh, and then we do a joint trial running program with RTG, and then from there, OC Transpo will work with the system to determine a launch date. If you go to the next slide. So we'll skip over to the west, where there's been lots of activity as well, so we go to the First slide. So if I just if we start from Tunney's Pasture, and I'll take you on a bit of a, a journey on the on the new alignment. So first, right off the looking off the end of the platform at Tunney's Pasture, you see this Goldenrod Bridge, which is going up. And so you actually see a, a road that's on an embankment. So we need to put this Goldenrod Bridge in so we'll to be able to detour the traffic onto it, and then we'll get rid of that road that's built on the embankment. And that'll continue to allow the trains to get through the rock cut past Westboro, past Dominion, then over to the S-Jam on, uh, on the next slide. So the S-Jam, they're actually going to be doing a pretty interesting construction technique. They're using, a, they set up a slurry plant. Um, and so there's, uh, you know, for, for tunnel uh, aficionados, it's, uh, it's a really interesting technique where they're actually going to excavate the dirt, fill it in with the slurry, and then replace the slurry with the, with the concrete walls. And so there's, there'll be an interesting process to, to get that built, but essentially that allows them to, to build the, uh, the tunnel through this area along the SGM. And then if you go to the next slide, uh, you see where it cuts across and then into Byron Linear Park. And then this is pretty, a lot of this work is pretty well hidden 
uh, behind the fences and the echo barriers on the fences. Uh, but you just see the level of activity in the area. You see two crane towers in the distance uh, working on, you know, new structures. You see the excavation of the tunnel itself. And then even on the right-hand side, you see that they're doing sewer work on Byron Road. So a ton of activity in this area. And so we certainly appreciate all the patients, the residents in this area uh, have shown for the, for the activity. Um, it's going to get busy um, this summer for sure as we start to get deeper down with that tunnel and start to do more construction. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see where... Uh, it, the tunnel is going to pop out kind of at the top top of this picture. Um, that's what will kind of come out of the ground and it'll be at grade through the Lincoln Field Station. Uh, we flipped over a new temporary bus loop in December, which is uh, a, another key milestone for us in terms of getting the uh, making space or preparing to make space for the future LRT station. So there's a lot of activity in and around that station and a lot of activity on Carling as well um, with sewer replacement and other work. Uh, from here, if you go to the next slide, it goes into, into the park, and then you see here's the split structure. I know there's been a lot of questions about uh, what this is going to look like, and so we've seen it come out of the ground here. Uh, so there's a lot of good progress. This allows them to uh, create, essentially create a flyover for the trains, but also gets us over the creek, you know, which is in the foreground. Uh, from here, the trains will go south, and you go, if you go to the next slide, you get a good shot of the work that's ongoing at Iris. And so this first one is uh, an open bottom culvert. This is part of the Pinecrest, real, uh, Pinecrest Creek realignment work that we're doing. If you go to the next slide, you get a bit of a pan out shot of the creek. Uh, so we created a structure for the creek. And so the road will be realigned over that structure. And then to the right of the page, we're actually going to create a new bridge uh, to go over the LRT. And so this is going to force the, uh, the buses on detour. Uh, but essentially we'll, we'll reinstate eventually with a, a straight line Iris Street through this area. So you go to the next slide, we'll go further south uh, and we'll have a look at Algonquin and here at this photo the excavations ongoing for the for the new uh, station at this location and then you can actually see at the, the edge of the road there you can kind of peek into the underground structure that exists today which will become the uh, basically the, the stopping point for the trains in the future. So a, a lot of good progress there. If we go to the next slide, we'll flip back over to uh, some of the work that's happening uh, in the West and on the MTO interchanges in particular. So this is actually, uh, so on the inner loop beside the road, beside Pinecrest Road, we're gonna build a bridge uh, and the bridge is gonna be pushed into place. And so if we go to the next slide, we have a, a pretty good picture of, you see Pinecrest Road in the, in the distance, they're going to build the horizontal structure that kind of goes, cuts across those two walls. And then over a, an extended long weekend, we'll actually slide that structure into place. We'll have to shut down Pinegrass Road and then fill it in, pave it over. And that becomes the tunnel uh, for the train under Pinegrass Road in this area. And obviously Pinegrass Station on the other side of that road. If you go to the next slide, uh, we see this is a bit of an easier uh, work at, the, at Holly Acres. We're building a light rail bridge that goes over the line. So good. Uh, Good progress there on that bridge and the girders should go in uh, early spring to that really close that up. If you go to the next slide, we see an image of uh, Moody Interchange. And so in, in the distance, you see uh, essentially the transitway and the highway running together, connecting with Corkstown Road. That's where the future station will be. And from there, the train needs to go under that existing bridge, go under the ramp, go under Moody, uh, go under another ramp and then go into the LMSF, which is just kind of behind us in the picture. So a lot of activity in this place, in this location to realign the bridge, uh, to make space for the new bridge that will allow the LRT to go underneath. So a lot of work at Moody Overpass. Go to the next slide. Um, so some upcoming work. So again, continued work on the tunnel, uh, retaining wall construction and bridge deck work to occur at Lincoln Fields. Uh, that Woodruff pedestrian bridge. So the, the contract requires that the new pedestrian bridge be in place before the old one's taken down. So they're going to start on that new pedestrian bridge. Carling Avenue has a bunch of detour work and transitway detour related with Iris Street is going to come into effect later in the year as well. If you go to the next slide. Uh, so Algonquin Station, we'll start to see some progress there with the foundations. Connaught Park has a short uh, cut and cover tunnel that goes between the park and Queensview Station. So that work will start. Precasting of the Pinecrest Road Bridge, which is what I just uh, showed you with that structure they're going to push in place. Holly Acres Light Rail Bridge will continue. And then all of the work at the Moody Drive Bridge uh, interchange at, and the Moody Drive itself uh, will continue. So a lot of, lot of activity. Um, they're looking at roughly $700 million worth of work on the Confederation line in this year alone. So if you go to the next slide. 
Uh, so a number of traffic mobility impacts. Um, I think a, a number of them have already been in effect. Richmond Road has been uh, multiple off-peak closures. Carling Avenue has some impacts because of the sewer, uh, sewer work. Uh, Iris Street, you know, needing to put those buses on detour, that'll have a big impact. And then Richmond Road at Woodruff, you know, we need to get the tunnel through there. We don't know what exactly we're going to find when we get in there. And so there is going to be a, a short duration closure of that intersection to allow us to do the preliminary works and uh, and essentially plate over the uh, the roadway at that location allows us to work underneath. You go to the next one. Uh, the next uh, couple of big ones are uh, ramp closures at, <clears throat> on the MTO interchanges. These are really necessary to allow us to build either trenches or bridges, bridges that go over the light rail line or trenches that go under the existing roads. Uh, so there's a lot of impacts. This is very complex work in very constrained areas. And so there's, it's gonna be complicated, which is why we have to implement some ramp closures, but there's a lot of good information uh, that's been shared by our comms group on this point. Go to the next slide. So just an overall look at the schedule. Again, similar to East, uh, you know, we're looking at 2021, 2022 for the build out of the guideway. That may go a little bit into 2023 with the tunnel work, but then 2023, 2024, that's finishing the stations, putting in the system infrastructure, the cat area, the substations, and then 2025, we're into the, the full testing program before we, we hand over. Now, on the O-Train uh, Confederation line, East and West, we've seen some schedule challenges. Uh, but we've been able to work through those with the contractor such that we're maintaining the original timeline for this project. If you go to the next slide. I just want to talk briefly about the stage two uh, vehicles, um, just because there is an additional order of 38 vehicles coming uh, from Rito Transit Group. They're being built uh, by Alstom in their Brampton facility. Uh, we've put four of them into service already. They've been commissioned, and we're expecting, if you go to the next slide, it gives you kind of a high level of... Oh, doesn't give you, we didn't include the schedule, but essentially there's 12 more that are due roughly by the end of this year and into 2022, but they're arriving well ahead of when we need them for the East and uh, the, the remaining ones for the West are again, arriving well ahead of when we need them for the West. So just a couple of shots of that Brampton facility. And then the vehicles are being trucked to Ottawa. Once they get to Ottawa, they need to be put back together and then commissioned on our train control system and commissioned on our tracks uh, before we can release them into service. So we go to the next slide. Um, <clears throat> so just a high level uh, overview of all the work that the comms team has been doing. You know, they've been uh, sending out to the councillors the update every two weeks, just kind of with information uh, on progress and then, you know, trying to host as many, uh, you know, community events and updates as are desired or as are needed to keep people updated on all the, all the things that are coming and all the changes with either the road network or, or with detours or, or impacts on transit that are happening. So they've done an excellent job of keeping everybody up to date. Um, and that's the last slide. So happy to uh, take questions or comments if there are any. Hey, uh, thank you very much. Uh, for the benefit of people who um, did not see us rise and report, I'm gonna repeat at the advice of the clerk our comments and Councillor Dude asked if you could read the motion again because uh, I don't think it was captured on YouTube. Uh, for the benefit of those joining us online, the FEDCO committee just met in camera in order to receive a staff presentation on LRT stage one claims update. These matters will not be reported as they relate to litigation or potential litigation affecting the city and 13.1 bracket F, the receiving advice that is subject to solicitor client uh, privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. During the in-camera session, no votes were taken other than procedural motions under directions to staff. And uh, Councillor Dude asked if we could put the motion back up. Um, I think, uh, Madam uh, Committee Coordinator, can we just read the therefore be it resolved? Because it's up on the screen. I think that might do uh, Councillor Dude ask. It would be appreciated. <laughs> Uh, therefore, it be resolved that Finance and Economic Development Committee recommends that City Council approve the additional budget authority of 15 million for Project 907143 Confederation Line Contingency to be funded as, as described in this motion and on the understanding that the City intends to include and attempt to recover these costs in the dispute resolution process against RTG. All right. Thank you. Uh, just a, a quick uh, comment, uh, Mr. Morgan and Mr. Manconi. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think when you see the, the volume and magnitude of the work that is going on 
really in all parts of the city. Uh, you recognize that a lot of progress has been made since our last update. And uh, I just wanted to thank our staff and our uh, contractors for the work they're doing, often not in, in great conditions, and of course, having to deal with a, a pandemic uh, that uh, no one could have imagined. So uh, my sincere thanks uh, for a job well done. And uh, we'll just go to questions and comments from uh, members. Uh, the first person I have, I don't have anyone from Fedco, so we'll go to Councillor Brockington. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Morgan, for the presentation. I agree with the mayor. Seeing the the global update of, of our large city, you know, I'm focused in, in the south end with the Trillium line in my ward, but seeing what's happening in the west end and east end is is very beneficial for me to wrap my head around it. Certainly, I hear my colleagues provide updates and speak highly, but I thank you for the presentation. Just a few quick questions on the Trillium line. Um, I wanted to follow up on the, the Brookfield Junction, which is in my ward and, and some challenges that are happening there. Can you just elaborate on, on what you're experiencing? Yeah, I think, uh, so the Brookfield Junction, I, I think you, you're referring to the Elwood Diamond and the grade separation at that location. Uh, last year, we flagged that as a potential challenging location uh, for the contractor. There's a lot going on there, you know, a creek, a multi-use pathway, a transitway bridge, uh, and then obviously the via via grade crossing. Uh, so that's been a challenge for us. It hasn't progressed as quickly as we'd hoped, uh, but they are they are working through that, uh, and we do hope to see that the structure come out of the ground pretty quickly here uh, in the spring. The presentation video in, in your presentation did not include Walkley Station. You included the Walkley storage facility, but not Walkley Station. Can you, I, I don't need the whole rundown, but are we on track? Uh, just the highlights. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, so we, we didn't include all the stations. We provide kind of a snapshot of some of the ones uh, where there's been progress. I think that uh, Walkley is challenged by some large uh, diameter utilities in, in the area. Uh, but that work should be starting soon. We have some questions regarding the, uh, the interface with the, the bridge. Uh, obviously, there's uh, some work that we need to do to rehab the bridge during this project, uh, but all stations should be under active construction. If they're not already, or if it's not apparent already, then, uh, then they will be very soon. In the interest of time, I'll just raise one last issue, and that is a number of pedestrians who take the Sawmill Creek multi-use pathway, which uh, starts or terminates at Hunt Club Road and they and they walk north have had to walk actually in the on-ramp lane travel lane because the MUP has been closed parts of the MUP have been closed for construction can I just flag that with you to follow up on to make sure we're providing a safe passage for pedestrians absolutely I'll take that away counselor right. talk thank to you in the morning thank you for the presentation Great, thank you very much, Councillor Brockington. Uh, Councillor Deans, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, just following up on Councillor Brockington, I too am going to focus on the Trillium line because that's the area that runs through my ward. But um, Mr. Morgan, when you were talking about East-West line and East-West connectors and you put up the slides, you said you're maintaining the original timelines. I didn't detect the same confidence when you talked about Transit Next and the Trillium Line project. In fact, you, you referred to scheduled pressures. So I'm just wondering if you could outline for us the magnitude of those pressures where they are, what's causing them, and if this project is delayed. Yeah, so just quickly, uh, you know, we released the Q4 memo the other day and did kind of point to, uh, you know, some, some challenges that we're facing. You know, the contractors reported some delays. We've done an, our own independent review of those timelines. Uh, it requires further analysis. Like we're, we don't just automatically accept a, a notification of a delay at face value. Um, we have done some, you know, preliminary workshop with them and we're looking ahead to do further workshops with them. Right now, uh, you know, our independent review suggests that it's 40 days, uh, could be that. But again, that's uh, it's a heavily qualified date timeline. Um, you know, there's a lot of kind of caveats to that. So we need to work through all those caveats and to, to make sure it's real. Uh, obviously, you know, keeping in mind, we want to push them uh, to stay on track and, and, and maintain momentum on this project uh, to the extent possible. Yeah. 
is the South Q station one of the pressure points? In terms of in terms of pressure points, uh, I would say that the you know there's a couple. The Elwood Diamond is you know is a structure that we flagged last year. Uh, South Keys is one of the more complicated locations. Um, we do have a, a tail track going in at that location, um, and and that is you know between. If you leave Walkley Yard going south, you need to go through South Keys. If you're going the other direction, you need to get through Elwood Diamond. So absent those two structures um, being being ready, I think it proves a challenge to the schedule. I think even more critical than South, south Keys Station has been Hunt Club Road. You know, we need to get the Hunt Club Road bridge finished up, uh, and that'll be uh, put us in a better spot in terms of going forward with the testing program and everything else. It's one thing to get a station finished, and it's another to have a, a bridge that you need for actually testing the train. Right. Um, I know that COVID has caused delays in a lot of different business lines in the city, but I know construction actually may be one that hasn't been as impacted by COVID because construction has been allowed to continue. Our, I, I mean, I, I heard you say on the east-west line that you're maintaining original timelines. Are there any COVID-related delays that you're aware of? I mean, COVID is a is a challenge. I think that the industry is facing generally in Ottawa. I think if you look at all the work that the subcontractors are doing in terms of how they plan their activity, the need for social distancing, uh, you know, they've had to kind of regroup and and rethink how how they do some of the activities. I think we've benefited a little bit so far um, from the nature of our work has been, uh, you know, outdoors and wide open spaces. And the start of the project has been around more grading. The more you get into kind of close in, enclosed spaces, the more challenges you might have. Um, and then there's kind of a, some people would point to challenges with supply chains and when, if they have materials coming from other parts of the world, uh, then there could be impacts. Um, you know, we, in terms of the Trillium line, we have been tracking the, the Stadler vehicles coming out of Switzerland. Obviously, Europe's had some COVID impacts. Uh, you know, those, the vehicles seem like they're going to arrive on time, uh, you know, start arriving, arriving later this year, despite the COVID impacts in Switzerland. Similarly, for the stage two vehicles uh, on the Confederation line, they're being built out of the Brampton facility and Brampton's a hotspot. And so we're very cognizant of the measures that people need to take to, to be safe and to keep the workers safe. So far on the two projects, I say we've we've had very good luck in terms of compliance and you know limited issues. Uh, so so we keep a close eye on it and it, it, with an eye to the overall project schedule, but also but more importantly to the eye you know with an eye on the health and safety of the workers and the people actually building the project. Okay, thank you. Just one more question, and that is the, uh, about the O train shutdown. When we when we shut down the O train, it was for 28 months, which I think I argued, and I think Councillor Brock Brockington did too at the time, that that was an awfully long shutdown on that line for students and for other people that uh, depend on the O train uh, for their daily transportation needs. Um, so, you know, I. I believe we always intended that uh, for the school year in 2022, that would be open again. Is that still on track? That's what we're, you know, we're, we're keeping the pressure on, you know, that's part of the analysis we need to do to understand where they are with their schedule. You know, we have seen some, some flippage and so we need to, to get back with them. They've committed to getting in a room with us and making sure that it's clear uh, what the challenges are and, and what the opportunities are to recover that. So um, there's some more work for us to do on that front. And when could we expect an update on that? That work probably is going to take uh, one to two months. So I would say the next quarterly update, we should kind of revisit this and give you an update on where the schedule is. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Um, Morgan, just on that issue, uh, if because of uh, a number of different reasons, if there is a delay uh, for the start of the school year, the university school year, is there a possibility that we could negotiate to have the uh, three new stations uh, on the existing line all the way to South Keys uh, open uh, in September uh, to get that portion, you know, because it's going to be a real challenge with the schools and Bayview being an important uh, uh, crossing between East, West and North, South. Is it a possibility that, um, with the next quarterly report, you say, well, there, you know, there are legitimate reasons or 
uh, reasons that they won't be able to get uh, the entire length of the Trillium line built, but let's get the old Trillium line with the three new additions all the way to South Keys and allow them, if they need an extra month or two to do the rest of the work farther south, uh, then, then it would get done there. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something we can re certainly revisit with them. Uh, we haven't contemplated it at this point, but you know, I think that anything that you know, we can do to you know, get that line you know, open for you know, as early as possible, I think would help. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Menard, please. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. And uh, similar questions on the O train shutdown. Um, we on the stage two delay, the O train was was shut down for Carleton students for for 28 months instead of the anticipated uh, 16 months. I'm in regular contact with with Carleton University, uh, the grad student association, undergrad student associations there. And they're very anxious to get information about how their school year is going to be affected uh, in the future. Uh, September 2022 was the original scheduled date uh, that this was going was supposed to be back online and opened up for uh, for students. So I just I guess the question is similar to Councillor Deans and, and Councillor Brockington is when when is the public actually going to know um, uh, how long it's it's being delayed? The specific timeline. So are we going to find out in a month? or another two months? When will we know that I can then transfer that information to, uh, to Carleton students and the administrators? Mr. Mayor, I just, you know, I, I'm hearing the word delayed a lot. Um, we, we right now are telling you that there is challenges with the schedule. Uh, we have been proactive and the contractor has been very proactive in identifying challenges. They've also been very proactive in throwing additional resources. You know, we, we've talked about the stations. Yeah, they've brought in three extra crews uh, to accelerate station work where they're challenged in other areas. And um, uh, what we wanted to do today, uh, both the in-camera session and here, is signal to you where we are. We're working with them. We're going to come back with a, uh, we've uh, brought in the experts to look at the schedule, the, what's possible, what can be recovered. It is a fluid situation. And um, uh, so I, we're not declaring it being delayed right now. We're telling you that they have identified challenges that we've also brought in the teams on how to mitigate those challenges. And there's a, uh, there's a gap that uh, we wanna minimize and we will absolutely throw everything at it. And Councillor Menard, I couldn't agree with you more. We absolutely know what you've said, what Councillor Brockton and Councillor Dean have said. We are very sensitive to those students who, you know, if they do go back to in class, Remember, they also give us a U-Pass, which is guaranteed revenue. So we, we're, we're locked in with you in terms of, you know, the university preserving that, uh, that, uh, that date if we can as much as possible. It's just too early for us to give you a definitive answer right now. We're just being proactive. Unlike stage one, where the contractor was always saying, oh, we're going to make it, we're going to make it. We have contractors that are now identifying challenges when they're aware of them. And we have the experts on, on staff uh, retainer to help mitigate and look at everything under the uh, under the, the hood to, uh, in terms of possibility to mitigate any potential slippage in the schedule. Thanks very much. That's very helpful, uh, Mr. Mancone. And I guess this just uh, to be open with communication uh, with us about if there is an identified timeline that is going to be um, stretched out, uh, that we actually uh, are able to communicate that back to our partners who are uh, potentially going to be using the R2 line longer than than anticipated um so i appreciate the answer and uh, looking forward to discussing it more with you when when we get those answers around uh, any potential uh delay or not thanks great thank you councillor councillor leeper please thanks uh very briefly first i just want to say uh, i'm getting relatively regular reports from former Mayor Holtzman with respect to progress of the slurry uh, tunnel. And uh, she seems to feel that it is progressing very nicely. So uh, thank you for that. Um, the Corso Italia station, Bayview station, and particularly the rock widening south of um, uh, south of the Queensway around Young Street and, and Point South. They see, they look like they're behind. I was expecting rock widening to start, you know, months ago. Is it behind? Is it on schedule? Are you facing a schedule pressure through the, the portion of the O-Train from Beach North? I'll let Michael explain the challenges there. There's water and utilities are the challenges with those station counselors. But part of the reason I wanted to show the video and all those pictures is 
and I, all of you have picked up on it, is the beauty of the size and the scale of this $5 billion project, we can shift resources to other areas and accelerate other works. So where there is a lag, other areas are picking up and, and, and both contractors are very, very quick to do that. Uh, but Michael, very quickly, just to talk about uh, the utility challenges and some water issues at Gladstone and the other stations it's come up a couple of times. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a major, there, there's major telecom, uh, major telecom corridor running through that section of the rock cut, uh, you know, and so that needs to be protected. Um, and obviously those service providers are very uh, concerned about uh, the, the quality of their service that they can provide. They don't want any impacts. And so there are, you know, you do need to schedule outages. You do need to do some cutovers. I think the widening itself is not a problem for us in terms of the schedule. I think that, that as long as you can protect the utilities, you can kind of get in there, widen the, widen the tracks. And then the, once the tracks widen, the work that to build up the guideway is fairly straightforward sure. as compared to the station, you know, where we went in, we did the widening uh, last year, but now, you know, there's a, again, with all the utilities and locations, some water impacts, some very poor drainage in the area generally, um, you know, it is going slower than we would have expected and hoped. We would have seen, hoped to have seen more progress at the stations generally uh, at this point in the project. In terms of a, of a completion impact though, um, it, at this point, you don't feel that it's going to knock the overall project completion off significantly? Uh, no, we're still uh, still seeing it being relatively contained, that there's still opportunities to mitigate. Uh, you know, th we, there are some, you know, some things in their schedule that we want to work through with them that we need to in order to, to understand, you know, what are the what are the pinch points? For me, it's, I want to see the trains run, which is why I was flagging Hunt Club Road and Elwood Diamond as being key locations. Leicester Road is, is you know, that bridge is in great condition. Uh, they're going to run a test track, and, and there's a section of uh, roughly three kilometers between Hunt Club and uh, Leitrim, where they're going to. That'll be where the first testing of the trains gets completed, and that track uh, they've already started it. So there's good progress there. You know, you can always kind of finish off stations while you're running trains, and so you know, it's trying to find that right balance between how much testing can you do when you when you have an unfinished station. It's much easier on this system because we don't have overhead catenary, we don't have an electrified system. Uh, you know, it's a, you know, we don't have a, you know, three, four or five minute headways. We've got 12 minute headways. So there's some opportunities, I think, that are real on this project to, to catch up. Okay. We'll keep an eye on it. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mayor. Great. Thank you, Councillor Leeper. Merci. Uh, so uh, the IPD is received. Uh, French Language Service Advisory Committee, Committee de, de langues Service um, pour la Ville d'Ottawa. Uh, nomination de membres suppléant au comité consultatif sur les services en français. A notice is a motion. Any notice is a motion. Uh, inquiries, any written inquiries, Madam Coordinator? Uh, adjournment. Uh, thank you all very much uh, for your patience. And um, it's been a long meeting, but a productive one. And I appreciate uh, everyone's participation. Take care. Meeting adjourned. Ooh.